But there was this guy that was undermining Hezekiah. He was undermining his reformation. I'm going to read it to you out of Isaiah 22 before the scripture that I just read you. It says, come, go to this contemptible steward and to the treasurer, to Shebna. Everybody say Shebna. Who is over the house. He was the steward, the treasurer. He was given the charge, the governmental authority over the house. But who is presumptuous enough to be building himself a tomb among those of the mighty. A tomb worthy of a king. And say to him, what business have you here? And whom have you entombed here that you have the right to hew out for yourself a tomb here? It was, it was customary in those days that kings built very, very large tombs as a sign of their greatness and of their legacy. And this guy wasn't the king, but here he is building himself this huge tomb. And he says, he hews out a sepulcher for himself on the height. He carves a dwelling for himself on the rock. Behold, the Lord will hurl you away violently, O oh, you strong man. Yes, he will take hold of you, and he will surely cover you with shame. He will surely roll you up in a bundle, Shebna, and toss you like a ball into a large country. There you will die, and there you will be your splendid chariots. You disgrace your master's house. And I will thrust you from your office, and from the station will you be pulled down. So here he had a key, but he lost his key. You know how he lost it? Through pride. And presumption. I really believe that God's getting very serious about his church in this season of time. And it's not just about making a name for ourselves, either on a pulpit or in the community. I mean, that's, that's okay. God's going to give us favor. God's going to give us fame. But if that's what's motivating you, God's going to deal a death blow to ambition, human ambition. God's going to deal with our pride. And God's going to deal with our independence. Help me, Lord. (laughs) No no comments from the front row. (laughs) He He was presumptuous. He was prideful. He was promoting himself. And the Hebrew scholars even believed that he was in league with the Assyrians who were trying to figure out a way to besiege Jerusalem, which they eventually did. It's interesting. In verse 17, it calls him a strong man. Now, that could just refer to his position of government, but I think that in today's terminology and language, we understand, I think Shebna is a strong man that's not just dealing with people and trying to get people's destinies off track through getting them caught up in the wrong things, but I think that it's a strong man that's trying to get nations off track. And there's a tipping point of nations right now. And I think that this demonic spirit wants to put pride in nations. I think the United States of America is being shaken because there's been a Shebna control over our land. And you can see this by, uh, by some of these things that I put here on, the, on the, the, the board up here because I believe that this spirit and those that are affected by it are wielding power through political and religious spirits. And they're going to be judged by the Lord. But this battles over nations and generations. And you can see, here's the battleground. Number one, who is going to be worshipped? There's a concerted effort to push God out of the public square in America and in a lot of nations. This nation was founded as one nation under God. It was founded to be a, a land of religious liberty. It was founded to be a place where people could grow and thrive in their religious walk, in their, in their Christian walk. But now, <laughs> to, to bring God into the public square at all is contentious. The question is, who is going to be worshipped? Well, I can tell you the religious liberty is under attack, but I can also tell you that prophetically, the prophets, the apostles, the reformers have made the declaration, America shall be saved. And I believe that. And those that are watching from other nations, I believe that God is contending over nations today. But we've got to pray. We've got to use our key to unlock this nation for the revival, for the awakening, for the things. God's not just going to do it. We've got to contend. We've got to be those that are cooperating with heaven. Number two, who controls the supply lines? You know, in a battle, whoever's got the supply lines usually wins the battle. Number three, who's setting policy? In other words, who's in control? And number four, who controls the narrative? That's the media. 
And so here Shebna seemed to be in control of everything, but God took the authority, took the key out of his hand. And look in Isaiah 22, 19, it says, and in that day, in that day, I will call my servant Eliakim, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe. And I will bind your girdle or your belt on him. And I will commit your authority to his hand. And he will be a father of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder. And he shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one shall open. And I will fasten him like a peg on a nail in a firm place. And he will become a throne of honor and glory to his father's house. Can you see the power shift? We're in a moment right now of a power shift. We're in a moment right now where God is shifting things. God is changing things in nations, not just this nation, in other nations. God is removing Shebnas in the religious world that are in it for the money, in it for the fame, in it for the wrong reasons. God's removing Shebnas out of the business world, out of the, out of the government world. Come on, God's dealing with Shebnas and he's raising up Eliakim's. Those that are servants, those that want to bring glory to the, to, the, to the Father. You know what Eliakim means? It means whom God raises up or whom God sets up. Look at your neighbor and say, God's setting you up. <laughs> Come on, God's setting you up. I believe in this season of time, God is setting you up. Hezekiah was was the ruler, but the people under him weren't representing him, so God said, enough is enough. So I believe that in this season of time, God wants to put keys in our hand. Amen? So God is saying to the ecclesia, take your keys. Take your keys and use them. Take your keys and use them. He's putting the keys of the kingdom, the key of David, if you can go to the next slide, the key of David upon the shoulder of the ecclesia. You understand, we're the keepers of the keys. Jesus has them, he's given them to us, and we're the keepers of the keys. God is giving us unrestricted power, unlimited access to both his throne of grace as well as the treasury for all that we need to advance the kingdom. 